Brethren, the first Purdue song interprets us that today is the day of joy and we have been a joy to rejoice with him. And the second Purdue song interprets us the sacrificial lamb is born. And so today is the day of joy. And I want to ensure you that all of us should open our mind. Whatever who had grudged one another should clear your mind and let everything be pure in you. Because those of you who have never danced before, today you will dance dexterously. Those of you who have not been singing because of one problem or the other, all these problems are gone and you will sing and dance because the sacrificial lamb is born and there is joy all over the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> If those from the East have heard about the birth of this great king and they have come all the way from the East to worship him, then talk less of those of us who are here. What is, what is expected of us to do? So, Brethren, Mary, the mother of the Lord Jesus the Christ, with the Lord Jesus the Christ alongside would have been killed. Because according to the Jewish uh, uh, law, if a woman 
is conceived without being from the husband. Such a woman is killed openly, disgraced, and killed. And that was the situation with that of Mary. But in this case, God had intercepted and brought peace. And so there was nothing that he was killed. He was spared. Um, since Joseph had taken to the instruction of God, he did not expose Mary, but rather wanted to send her out of the matrimonial home in a very secret way so that nobody would know. That is why I'm telling you that today is a day of joy. Our joy is filled because even the Savior had to come and was given birth to without any problem. And he is the one that has wrought salvation to all of us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, the story surrounding the birth of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the nativity of our Lord Jesus the Christ, is so great, so fat, that it is full of joy and happiness. And because of this, all our problems and difficulties are taken away. All sicknesses are gone. Whatever be your lack, Father has given you all what were your lack. Those who don't have good job opportunity right now, you've been given one. Those who are barren, Father has blessed your womb, and you are now mother of many children. This is all to rejoice with you in this story that has to do with the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Mary and our Lord Jesus Christ would have been killed alongside. 
according to the Jewish custom and tradition, any woman who is who conceived outside without the knowledge of the husband, such a woman has to be killed. And that was why God came into Joseph and he wanted to divorce Mary secretly without the knowledge of anybody. But the angel of God saw this, went and told him, all your plans, the plans within your mind is known unto God. Do not send your wife away, but rather take her home. Because the one which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, is of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph immediately hearkened to the instruction that God had sent unto him and took her home. And behold, our Lord Jesus Christ came. Father told him that he would be the one that would wrought salvation to his people Israel, to the whole world. And so if he did not hearken to his instruction, where do you think the world would have been now? All of us would have perished. That is why I'm telling you that it's good to hear and obey. All the dreams you've been having, some of us will say it is the food of the eye. It is not so. These are the revelations that God has sent to you and to me, which we have to hearken and do exactly what we are told. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right from now, Say, Right from now onward, the act of abortion has been abolished. It's no more. Because the number of children that you have killed, the number of people that God has sent into the world to come and save the world, many of them have been killed, have been aborted without any reason. And all those men who are in the habit of driving away women after conceiving them, such acts is no more. Whenever you conceive a woman, don't be afraid. God will take care. Stand by and face the consequence. Because the child that is coming out is a savior. Name that child the savior. Name that child the comforter. Yes, God has sent all these personalities to come into the world to redeem the world. And when you go and kill them, what do you think about the world? Like a Lord Jesus Christ, if he had been aborted, what do you think the world will look like now? And therefore, we have to stand by. And also, all those who have been having dreams, who say dream is the food of the eye, is not a reality. I want you to realize that from now, it is a reality. And so you should take it very serious. Whatever is revealed to you in the dream, take it very serious. Adhere to the instructions so that all will be well. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, who said the young boy? So one of them from maybe Michael. Kuru, you want me to take a parents in me? Yes, who parents in me? Kuru, I was there. My three, my three boy, I for Unamke, who you say? Hmm? Who show you the me? I see one in the me. I come. I tell you, I walk. And I'm in for tomorrow. Tell me, you got it? But ten, ten, ten. Medium, the Kunum Dakapanical, Kunum Dakapanical, David Yong, 
Brethren, gone are the days of sin, gone are the days of suffering and lamentation, because all these things were caused out of disobedience. You pregnant a woman and you deny, you commit abortion and all the things that we do. That was why we were suffering. But now gone are these days because the Savior has been given birth unto and he has come to redeem us. And therefore we have to abide by his instruction and do all the things that he tells us and not to go and do something else. If our Lord Jesus the Christ was aborted and if Joseph did not abide by the instruction of God by taking Mary back to the house, do you think this salvation we are having now we would have enjoyed it? would have been impossible, it wouldn't have manifested, but because he took to the instruction of God and did exactly what God told him, that was why our Lord Jesus Christ came as the Savior, and therefore from now onward, we should obey the instruction of God, whatever be what he tells us in the dream, we have to listen attentively and do them, because even in the dream is the real aspect of it, the reality of it is in the dream world, in the spiritual world, where he directs you and tells you what to do, that is the real thing. Do not say it is the food of the eye or anything else. That is the reality. Whatever he tells you to do, do exactly. God can come to you and tell you that tomorrow you'll be in Lagos. And that is what will happen. He can direct you to live here and go somewhere and pray. You do exactly. All the things that he directs you in the spirit to do, you have to do it for the salvation of mankind. When you disobey, that is where the problem comes. But when you stick to this instruction and do it exactly, you realize that there will be no problem whatsoever. And all will be well. That is why at any point in time, we remember the story that surrounds the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be happy. We have to rejoice. This happiness, this joy has no beginning and has no end. Particularly when God instructed Joseph to take the wife back up to the house and he hid to the instruction. That alone should be the cause of our joy. If he did not hit to the destruction of God by driving away Mary, this salvation wouldn't have come to us. But because he hit to the destruction of God to take Mary back to the house, that salvation came to us. That is the cause of our joy. And whenever this story is told to us, we have to live for joy and be happy. 
because today the salvation of God has been extended to the whole world because of the birth of our Lord Jesus the Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We now listen to the second Bible lesson. Jerusalem <laughs> Our second Bible lesson. I'm in again. I'm Brethren, you can now see how the three wise men show the expression of righteousness by and they gave him their own present to appreciate his birth. In your own case, we've heard about his birth. What have you done? You find it very difficult even to remove one kobo and appreciate so that it doesn't go with righteousness. As the children of God, we have to be very happy and allow our appreciation to go with this work so that all will be well. That is why I'm telling you that we should not joke with dreams. Whatever God reveals to you in the spirit, it is definitely going to be true. It will come out, it will manifest physically. You can be sitting here now and a little bit you doze up and then you find God will come and speak to you and tell you the things you have to do. Within the next possible time you find these things will manifest, will come to pass. Therefore we shouldn't joke with dreams and revelation, whatever that God reveals to you, you have to heed to the instruction and do exactly so that all will be well with us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our second Bible lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 11. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have been 
We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is, it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule the, my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men in, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I come and worship him, and I come and worship him as king. When they had heard, when they had heard and seen the star, they departed and, and went. When they saw in the opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, <coughs> gold and frankincense and men. Peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you heard that? California. From Korea, and you hear me? Borrow your mother and book group of and to do so now. Bakara made your mother to my young mother and me, correct of Yanda, and as young as you. No young as the spirit, and it's only young as you. You are not me, you are not good. You keep on that. Miri, Yamar, Eden, you are so I bow. I said, in the new book, near your own. Entire room, my men, yeah, you may be worried. 
Brethren, the three wise men were in the spirit, they walked in the spirit, and that was why God revealed himself to them. And they came all the way from the east, guided by the star, to where the newborn king was. And when they came, they opened the treasures, which they came with the stores of their treasures, and dished out goods to pay obeisance to the newborn king. That is why I keep telling you that you have to sanctify yourself. You have to flee from all manners of sin. You have to flee from fornication and adultery. To flee from stealing, telling of lies, drinking, fornication, and so on. Because when you keep yourself clean, you be in spirit, and God will reveal many things unto you. They start guided the three wise men. In your own case, what is it that will guide you? Is it the sin you commit day by day that will guide you? If you don't walk in spirit, God cannot reveal anything to you. But if you are in the spirit, God will reveal things to you, and you will know them. All the things you find, they have their meanings. Like when you find a very shining star in the sky, that is the symbolism of a newborn child. And at the same time, when you find another star that flashes from one side of the end of the air, air sky to the other side, it means somebody has departed, has gone on a long ministry. All these things have their meanings. If you are not in spirit, if you don't sanctify yourself, how would God reveal these things to you? You would have heard of Sister Matt all the way at California. When she was three years old, she said she saw the father came to her and started teaching her. Not only her, many others who were there. The father started teaching the thing. And when she came here that year in 70, immediately saw, she saw the father and said, this is the man who always come to California to teach us. You see, without you are being in spirit, how would you know this thing? Even many of the children of God here and others have been testifying how the father reveals himself, himself to them right from when they were three years old. Some of them five years and so on. All the things you find in this kingdom have been revealed in the spirit, in the dream, before you see them. The white linen we are putting on have been revealed before you see them come to pass. And therefore, our Lord Jesus the Christ was only two years old when he became a king. And that was what was written about him. That was what was revealed about him. It's not that he was married or he had any car or he had children. But just at that age, that tender age, he became a king because it was what was written about him. What was revealed about him. That's exactly what comes to pass. And this is exactly to what happens to every one of us. Not because uh, you, you are too tall or short, but it is because these things were revealed about you. Like Joseph, in his own case, he was blessed right from the beginning. And that was why his brothers hated him. When God revealed to him how 11 bunches of firewood came and bowed down and worshipped one of them. And he told this dream to his brothers. They were not happy. And they said, oh, so you want to come, you small boy. You want to come and rule over us. Okay, we will not allow you to exist. That was where the war started, the hatred started. And as, as if that was not enough, God revealed again to him. And all these revelations, he told them to his brother, how the sun and the moon and the stars all came and bowed down and worshipped his own. And so the brothers were not happy. And therefore you realize, whatever you are in this world, it is revealed to you in the spirit, in the dreamland. Then it will manifest, it will come to pass in the physical world. And therefore, this is the time that we have to sanctify ourselves, purify ourselves, and allow God to come in and use us. We shouldn't joke with dreams. Anytime that God reveals anything to you, take it very serious, for it is nothing but the truth. It will definitely come to pass in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Palestinians should have to put them. Israelis. My name Egyptians. My name
from today on to you Brethren, when you when you are in the I Whenever the gospel is dished out, you are dumbfounded. But you will not receive it and assimilate and put into practice. That is the problem. I want you to realize that when you are in the flesh, when you are in this physical world, you will not get, nothing will be revealed to you. You will not know anything about God. It is in the spirit that God reveals everything to us and it comes to manifestation. That is why we should not joke with dream. God passes in dream and tells us what is his wishes to the people and what he wants us to do and when we believe in them we don't have any problem the reason why the Jewish and the Egyptians fell was because they did not believe in dreams it was when God revealed to the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar that kingdom will come and will crush and finally one other kingdom will come that will swallow every other one he did not believe until all these things came to pass. And therefore, whatever you see manifesting in the world today, it is from revelation. It is from dream. In the same token, it has to do with the Lord Jesus the Christ in his back, in his coming back. He had told the people the way which he will re-manifest, which he will come back again. When Adam and Eve heard in the garden, it does not mean that they did not plead to God. They did not cry. They did not beg God to forgive them. They pleaded and wept and cried for forgiveness and uh, at the end God heard their prayer. As they were going in the thick forest, he appeared and told them that this will be the sign of his reappearance, of his return. That it will be guided with the manifestation of gold, myrrh and frankincense. These are the three signs and you have to take note Whenever he comes, he manifests in that nature. And they, they took the belief and took it very serious. And now we've seen that these things are manifest. When our Lord Jesus the Christ was given birth to, the three wise men saw the star and came all the way from the east down to where he was and pay obeisance, worshipped him, removed, opened their store of treasure and dished out these things gold, mare, and frankincense, to go in consonance with what he had promised Adam and Eve, that when he will come, this will be the sign. And uh, there is something noteworthy there. They were rich people. These three wise men were very rich. But when they came, they bowed down. They nailed down and presented their gifts. They did not stand up because they were rich. They weren't proud. They were not arrogant. But to show that sign of humility, with all the wealth they had, with the riches, they kneeled down, nailed down, and presented this thing, worship him as the king. They said, where is the king that is born? We have come to worship him. They actually nailed down and presented their gift to him. This is what is noteworthy that we should take so that right from now, that is the attitude. That is a behavioral pattern of life. Wherever we go to, we have to worship him, kneel down, and pay our obeisance. Whatever we have, we give to adore him, to worship him, because he deserves it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Then, 
Brethren, I want you to realize that there were four wise men, but it was only these three that God wanted to pay obeisance to the newborn king. Because what they came with, the three gifts they came with had their symbolism, had their importance. The other fourth wise man had his own assignment of distributing what he had to other people, the poor and the needy. Remember the three wise men when they came, they bowed down and worshipped our Lord Jesus the Christ, presented to him gold, myrrh and frankincense. And all these things have their own importance, their own symbolism. The gold symbolizes the, the, the riches, the wealth and his sovereignty as a king. And then the myrrh is for embalmment, for preservation. Because you can recall when uh, there was famine in Egypt and the brothers of Joseph went out to search for food. When the food was brought, it was this myrrh that was used in preserving the food so that it can even stay for 100 years without decaying, without being rotten. That myrrh would preserve it. It's for preservation, for embalmment. And then the frankincense symbolizes power. Whenever it is being born here, the scent will overwhelm the whole of this place and all evil powers will be scared and the power that is divine will take control. That is the symbolism of these three presentations by the three wise men. And I want you to realize that these things have their own importance. Another point of interest in the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ is when Herod had sent his soldiers out to go in search of this child to destroy the child two years and God sent his angel to go and tell Joseph take that child away immediately and flee to Egypt don't waste time with the mother Joseph did not waste time he obeyed the instruction of God and did that and this is another point that we have to note about obeying the instruction of God hearing and hearkening immediately to hear whenever God commands whenever he reveals anything to you in the dream or in whatever form you have to rise up immediately and obey and do what he tells you. Joseph did not waste time. He did exactly as God instructed him and took the child away. And when the soldiers came on the way, they met the, 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 the story of the three male factors or the two male factors, the two thieves on the cross. One of them that had the salvation was the one who met with the soldier while he was coming from Egypt. Came and met with soldiers who were pursuing this child to kill the child and the soldiers asked have you seen anybody going along this passage he said no we haven't seen anybody nobody is going this way take the other direction and that was how our lord joseph christ joseph and the mother were saved the soldiers did not go there and in the same token when they came to the inn then the soldiers came again and there was a woman that god had kept in all these strategic points to save this child 
And when they came, the woman told the soldiers, look, we are here to guide the inn. And she dipped her hand into her pocket, bring out money and gave to them. And told them to go. They said, have you seen anybody here, any visitor? They said, no, there is no visitor around here. You go the other way, go, go, go. And the soldiers left. But she actually knew that there was visitor in the inn. Joseph was there, Mary was there, and the Lord Jesus the Christ was there. And that was how everything was said. This is the work of God. So we have to listen to the Spirit and walk in the Spirit at all times so that we may be able to grab His instruction and do what He tells us. When we walk according to His instruction, we will make no mistake whatsoever because obedience is the greatest teacher. If we obey the instruction of God, whatever He directs us and tells us to do, we do exactly, we'll have no problem. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> A golden text was taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, you can now see why God has given the whites the wisdom to invent automobiles, aeronautics, flying the aeroplane and all these things. It's because of that spirit of appreciation of what they did, going to bow down and worship this king and presented to them this gift, gold, mare and frankincense. That is why God has given that wisdom to them. When you begin to ask, why is it that the whites have the ability to invent automobiles and the rest of the things and do this and that. It's because of that. Have you been able to appreciate this king? Have you been able to be happy with him now that he has come back? Have you done as the wise men, the three wise men did? And therefore I want that text to be read again so that it will go in consonance with the spiritual song that what was done unto the Israelites, same will be done. Start from verse 12, Matthew chapter 2. No, Matthew chapter... We've already... Chapter <laughs> <laughs> The whites are set for him. They are set for his arrival. There are many of them who have kept their riches in storehouses waiting for his arrival. Their billions and trillions are stored and they are waiting for the time he will come. In your own case, what have you done? Rather, you come here to beg from the father. He is my father. He will give it to me. And so on and so forth. But these people are ready, just may appreciate it, coming to worship the king, giving him those gifts. You've seen what God has done. So therefore, I want that text to be read again. John chapter 1 from verse 12 down. Where John, he will say, I said, we have some prayer. And the people who work at our end, you know, more than the government in the top of us. But more me, everybody, them Kenyan is here. And we mark a two kids. Make it in your own way. 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 Make it in
Brethren, God will preserve your lives and you will live and see what the whites are going to do in appreciating this kingdom of God and God himself because you people are joking. Right now, as I'm telling you, there are very many of the whites who are ready. They have built skyscrapers. They have kept sufficient enough of money. They have built all sorts of things, kept vehicles, very expensive ones, waiting for its arrival. In your own case, what do you do? Even around here, to rejoice in the Christmas, you cannot even do it, to rejoice his bed over here. But go and see what the whites are doing in respect of receiving him for his birth on earth. But in your own case, what do you do? I told you about what happened in 1960 when two white men came here and said they wanted to take the father overseas to go and stay there with them. That here is a waste of time. They, they, and when they came, they, they made three promises to me and said, Father, if you come over, they will give you any amount of money that you need. And secondly, they said, Father, we will send you to the best university on earth. 
so that you go and study. And then finally they said, we'll make you the king of the world. And I started telling them, look, my kingship is the highest of it all. And I come with many crowns. And so I don't need to be made a king. And then secondly, I told them, look, I have come with my own university, with everything in it. My own university, when you graduate, you have work to do. Not the one of the world when you finish, there's no work, no money. And that my own have come with everything. And I told them, lastly, that all the money in heaven and earth is mine. And therefore, they couldn't say anything. And I told them, this is our own tongue. This is the tongue of the blacks. Therefore, if I would have followed them over there, it means the glory would have gone back to them. And the scripture wouldn't have been fulfilled that what was done to the Israelites would be done to the Gentiles. This is the tongue for the Gentiles. And that is why I have to remain here. Whether you like it or not, God will preserve your lives. And you will live and see these things. How the white will appreciate God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My good friend, and I'm Mokwe. Good old Jesus, I'm my king, I'm my king. I work in your tongue, I'm going to go back to the house. 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 This is a man who wrote a real message for the people who are teaching. The editor tongue, even in the best year, Senior prophet, your name is a man. Who would I be back? I didn't move without an uncle. Oh, I know we will work well. Then we put a boy by no monk. Rush out, then one young boy. Who you may you? Who come you may you? Who could more you be on me? You be on me, can come on me. Baka, and my old good for me. I think I know you. She will call you back. professor. University. So many years, every time I maintain this now. Every day, every day, Kanan <laughs> What is more than good? Could it always one Boys, <laughs> Nous 
Brethren, the teachings of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star and the teachings and the doctrines of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star is not adopted elsewhere. You cannot see it in any place. It is indigenous, it is natural, it's from the Father himself. And that is why it's quite, it has elude, eluded the wisdom of all the inhabitants of the world. The whites are coming in their number and uh, watch out and see because they have seen this truth. I have never gone to any church, never attended any church before in my life, never gone to any school to be taught by any teacher, I've never gone to the hill or to the mountain, everything in brotherhood is directly from heaven, is from God as it is preordained. And that is why you find these things keep unfolding day by day. And people are coming in. The situation where you are joking and toying about here will not be so. When the whites will come, because they have seen this thing, you will know that really this is not something to be toyed with. Like when Bishop Gorin and the sister came here, first of all it was a son, the two sons that came. When they came here and saw everything, went back and narrated the story to their father, Bishop Gorin. Bishop Gorin has been a professor for 19 years and later resigned. And is also the head of the church of his uh, forefather. But when he came here and uh, I told him I have ordained him to be my representative in overseas. He looked at me, watched at me carefully. And uh, when he left here and went back, it wasn't up to two weeks, he got baptized. And now he's saddling that responsibility on his shoulder, doing it very well everywhere. The sister, uh, Dickiness Gorin, has also written a book. And many other people, another brother from Germany, has also written a book about this kingdom because the whites have seen this thing. Many of them are waiting anxiously to see when it will come. Some have built skyscrapers, like I told you. Some have kept enough amount of money waiting for this kingdom. And therefore, if we were, they were to come here and evangelize us, they wouldn't have taken time. The whole world would be enveloped and everything, everybody will see the glory of God. But you are only wasting your time. That is why you keep on toying with the kingdom. You don't know what you are doing. And therefore, this is the time that you put away all form of jokes. If you have been joking, don't joke anymore. Guide your loins and get ready. Because this is not a matter of play. Everybody is getting set. The whole world is set for the kingdom. And that is why I have told you, I have come with my own mission to come and teach, to come and uh, change you and reestablish the kingdom on earth. And therefore, these are the things that I've come to do, and particularly I am facing it, and that is what I have already consummated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time of joy.
The second one says, only joy is found before the throne of the Lamb. I am assuring you that this is a time of joy. We have to be very happy. We have to live and give thanks to God. Jump for joy because he has taken dominion in heaven and earth. Everywhere the glory of God is shining. It has been revealed. The whites are ready, everybody. And this is the time that we have to work for, from our slumber and do what we are expected to do because he has taken dominion everywhere, all over the world. Before now, they used to say that if you are sick and you don't go to hospital, you will die of your sickness. So everybody was rushing to go and get his health from the hospital. But now, the medicine has failed. Medicine is no more effective. It's all, even the whites don't go to hospital. When you are sick, you only say let, and the sickness will let go, and you'll be instantaneously healed. Everybody now has seen even the whites, and therefore the Holy Spirit has taken dominion. There is no other thing apart from joy. And we have to go all over the world, wherever man is found, and disseminate this joy, this good tidings to people of the world. The Abbasites have this responsibility. They owe this obligation to go to all the universities in the world everywhere and tell them about this joy, tell them about this kingdom. That is the duty. I do not intend to take you further. Our Lord Jesus the Christ, at the end of his preachment, will always say, let those who have ears to hear, hear. And I also borrow a lift from him by saying, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. <laughs>